Welcome everyone to Methods and Materials Research. I'm your instructor for the course. My name is Dora Clark Pine. And again, welcome. Uh, I know this can be an intimidating class for a lot of people, but I'm, I'm going to try to make it as interesting, as meaningful, and as fun as I possibly can make it. Um, towards that end, you'll probably be happy to know there's no required textbook for the course. You can, uh, you can, if you decide you want to do this, you can get an optional textbook. Uh, it's called uh, Re Research Design, Quantitative, Qualitative, and Mixed Methods Approaches, uh, the third edition by John Cresswell. Uh, it's an older edition, so it should be cheaper. Um, try to save you a few bucks there, but you don't necessarily need it. Uh, I'll also have it on reserve at the library. It's there if you, if you want to access it. Um, so, so that's the good news. There's no required textbook, which means there's no uh, midterm, no final. Uh, typically, if I do have a midterm and final in my classes, it's based solely on the textbook. So you won't have to worry about a midterm or final for this class. You will have to worry about a few other things, uh, but they shouldn't be that bad from my perspective anyway. The first thing is a journal. I'd like you to journal a bit about the journey, so to speak, the research journey. Um, so on a weekly basis, after you've watched the assigned video lecture for the week, uh, you can journal a little bit about that process, what you've learned from that process, what surprised you, uh, what was old knowledge, maybe what was new knowledge, that sort of thing. It's really up to you what you decide to journal on regarding the lecture and or reading material that you come across as, as you're kind of tackling this course. Some of the journal articles that uh, you have looked at is you're trying to find your way and try to pick a, a, a research topic that has some meaning, some interest to you. So. Uh, Journal about the process. You'll be surprised what you learn when, when you're forced to do this, basically. I was surprised as I actually create an example for you, uh, which you can access uh, through Blackboard. But uh, I was surprised at uh, how meaningful that process can be. So anyway, uh, that's part of the requirements for the course. And, uh, and it's basically, it's worth a, a fairly good chunk, even though it's kind of one of those all or nothing assignments. You do it, you get it in on time, you should get full credit as long as you're taking the assignment seriously and, and, and kind of reflecting in a meaningful sort of way, not, not, not in a superficial um, um, sort of way. I mean, it, sh it should be a substantial process um, and, you know, you know, where you go is up to you, but, but, but try to take it very seriously. Um, so it's worth 35% of the grade. The, the other thing that, again, is, is a low stress assignment is, a, is an art project. And, and basically, uh, the art project will be a very small project made mostly of nature-related materials. Uh, so rocks, sand, bark, leaves, uh, uh, twigs, you know, branches, that sort of thing. Anything you can find in nature. Uh, about 95% of the composition should come from nature. And you can only use three man-made, three, three basically three man-made materials. And that could be something like maybe um, hot glue could be one thing. Another thing might be tape, paper. Um, that sort of thing, three man-made materials. But that should really uh, compose only 5% of the composition. Nature, the nature-related materials should uh, capture uh, most of the essence of the project, 95% of the composition. And it should be very small. It should be, uh, you know, five inches by five inches by five inches. So a very small project. It, it won't cost you an arm and a leg if you follow the rules. Uh, mostly man-made pro um, items, I should say. In fact, I, I, I have a project I'll show you in a second, but, but I want you to, what I want you to do with this is create a symbolic representation of the research process, any aspect of the research process that you, you want to focus on. 
uh, whether it's about a statistical concept, about uh, how you feel about the research process, it's up to you. And the example I have is actually one I use for another class. Uh, so if you take the other class, you'll see the same project, but it, it has different interpretations. I'll come close so you can kind of see what I've got here. Basically, uh, this first part, I got hold still while it tries to focus. Or do I have to go back? Okay, I think you can probably see it. It is basically, it's, a, it's bark, just a piece of wood, bark. And the only man-made uh, item I have in this entire project is hot glue. But it's bark and some, some weeds here. And, and it's basically a dead plant. Um, and, and I think this represents maybe what a lot of people feel like they bring to a course like this, a, a statistical course that seems very daunting in and of itself. They don't feel like they have much to bring. Um, and they're scared. <laughs> you know, there's a, almost scares the life out of you. Um, and, and, and I hope you can see this. This is actually made of rocks, a little bark, um, a leaf here, and it's kind of rounded. It, it, it's, it's trying to, to, to capture something, you know, like water maybe, like a cup, you know. And so, so this, this uh, person here is coming to the class hoping, hoping to have his or her cup filled and, and to get something meaningful meaningful out of this process. You know, this is where we come from, hopefully with open arms and the ability to, to take um, the information that we learn out of the class and uh, hopefully then this uh, comes to life. But if I added something else, I'd probably go over the five inch by five inch by five inch mark. So I'm just using two items here to represent uh, perhaps how some people might feel about the research process in and of itself. So, so I'm going to put this back on the bookcase. But that's the art project. And it's worth 10% of the overall grade. And it's, it's kind of an all or nothing thing as well. It's uh, you turn it in, you turn it on t in on time, and you should get full credit for it. As long as you um, remain within the parameters of, of the expectations. 95% should be man, not man-made, but nature-related materials, and 5% uh, could be man-made, but no more than three man-made objects. And, um, and again, within the confines of five inches by five inches by five inches. All right, so, so those are two easy things, actually. A journaling about the journey and an art project that represents where you're starting in terms of the journey. Uh, the third thing that I would like you folks to do is actually uh, the largest uh, or the probably the most daunting part of the process is to come up with a, uh, a mini research proposal. And we're only going to do a, you know, a couple, three steps of the entire process. We're never going to get to the point where we're going to actually go out and collect data uh, analyze the data and interpret the data, but we'll do everything before that process. And the syllabus goes into more detail regarding what's expected, but basically there are 10 areas that you need to cover in this very small paper. And I'm trying to remember how many pages I've asked you uh, to do. I, I don't want you to, to, to use uh, a font size that will make the paper larger. So stay with Times New Roman uh, size 12 font uh, because, you know, again, I, I don't want this to be a lengthy process. I want it more about quality than quantity. And, and a lot of times people um, feel like they have to explain everything. Uh, I'm hoping that you can be succinct and to the point and, and be brief. And, and, and not overwhelmed by the, the project in and of itself. So no more than eight pages is what I'm actually hoping for, which actually includes the title page, the abstract page, and the references. 
So you could get away with as few as five pages of text with this assignment. And it is possible to do because I've created an example for you, which you can access through Blackboard, which does just that. And, and basically, again, you're going to cover certain areas in this mini proposal. You're going to talk about, or you're going to uh, present a title, an abstract page, and a reference, a set of references, um, which may be one to maybe even two pages in length. You're going to have an introduction and background to the problem. You know. Uh, you're going to talk a little bit about a statement, an actual statement of the problem in and of itself. And, and actually, I'm just, just listing these because I provide you with a video of, of basically the paper um, via slide presentation. I also provide you an example of a paper. Uh, that you can use as a template for your, your mini research proposal. So, so again, introduction, background to the, pro, uh, to the problem, statement of the problem, purpose of the study, why, why do you want to do this, hypothesis or hypotheses, if you have more than one, uh, methodology, assumptions in the study, importance of the study, rationale for the study, and a section we call delimitations and limitations. And again, I'm not going to go into detail, I'm just listing the categories as long as you cover all the categories um, in a sufficient fashion, you should get full credit for the assignment. So this is worth 25% of the grade. Um, probably what will trip you up the most, to be honest, is not the content per se, it's, it's the format, because you need to use APA format when you do this paper. And um, I'm going to have to check, but hopefully by now I've got an example of an AP. Yes, I should have an AP uh, paper example for you. I, as I said earlier, you'll have a copy of the mini proposal. So that is using APA format. So again, you can use that as a template for your paper. Uh, so most people, if they lose credit anywhere, it's usually with APA format in terms of margins, in terms of punctuation. Um, uh, especially punctuation in terms of, of uh, line spacing and um, uh, continuity between paragraphs uh, within a paragraph, that sort of thing. So I use the APA publication manual, the most recent edition, the sixth edition right now, to, uh, to look over and kind of correct the paper. So, so make sure you consult uh, the manual before you turn in the paper, that will be helpful. This is going to be worth 25% of the overall grade. Finally, you, you get to replicate the process with a slide presentation. And, um, and basically, you're kind of covering some of the same areas. Uh, of course, you're not giving me a title page, an abstract page, that sort of thing, but the sections. You're, you're, you're kind of giving me a, a slide per section. The one thing I want you to really remember is to keep your bullets short and succinct, to the point. Um, the, the, I think we can all agree we've been in, in uh, classes where uh, presentations have occurred, where people have had uh, heavily worded slides and they read the slide word for word for word. Pretend that you are presenting this slide presentation to an audience. Pretend that and, 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 and make sure you keep your bullets short. In a sense, you be, should be such an expert on the topic that you're presenting that you need only a few key words to get you going, you know, to get you talking about that bullet. If your bullets are not self-explanatory, just put a little more information in the notes section for me to help me understand what you were trying to say. Uh, but again, keep the bullets short and sweet. Try to make the slides visually appealing. You know, try to uh, you know, spruce them up and, and kind of you know, align with what you're presenting. The pictures should kind of line up with some of the bullets or one or two of the bullets that uh, are on that particular slide. But try to make it um, entertaining, visually stimulating. Also, you want to kind of throw in some sort of group activity somewhere in there. Um, so that you know, we can kind of bring the, the, the audience in 
and make it an active process. If you were to present this, actually present this to, to an audience. Um, but again, you can, you can look over the syllabus for more details in terms of what's required, especially in the last two sections, the, uh, the paper and the slide presentation. But basically, the last two things should piggyback well together. I mean, you're not doing two totally different projects. It's the same project, just two different formats in terms of expressing or uh, um, communicating what you did with the process. So basically, those four elements are what the course is, 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 uh, is made up of. Um, and, and some, maybe even all four of those things, you'll actually find quite easy to do. Maybe you're a good writer, or you love to do artistic things uh, like art projects and slide presentations and that sort of thing. So, so this shouldn't hopefully be a difficult process. The, uh, probably the most important thing is, is um, staying on track in terms of due dates, time frames, watching things when you need to watch things, getting things in when you need to get them in, because that's probably going to cost you the most credit. The other area I mentioned already that might cost you um, credit, if you're going to lose credit anywhere, it's going to be with APA format on the critical analysis uh, paper, or I should say the mini research proposal. But anyway, it, it, uh, that's kind of it in a nutshell. And uh, I hope in the end you do enjoy the course and uh, you get something meaningful out of it. Just, just remember, this is getting your feet wet. Uh, we're, not, uh, we're not going to uh, you know, do anything like an analysis of a variance uh, on some data or uh, uh, any regression analyses or anything like that. This is just about trying to come up with an idea, a uh, proposal of some form. Uh, that uh, will help you understand the research process. And if you're deciding to go all the way up to a dissertation, will hopefully be uh, the foundation for that process. So welcome, and I hope you enjoy the course. Have a good one.